Hey guys, you may have noticed that I look a little bit different in this video. That's because I obviously have a different avatar. Not that I wasn't happy with the avatar that I myself made. It's just that this one made by, I'm sorry, I should have asked you how to pronounce your name and which name you wanted me to use to give you credit for this. So I'm just going to use the name that you signed off the email with and put it up here. Thank you so much for making these. They are... <laughs> objectively better than the one that I made. And saying that doesn't mean that I wouldn't have continued to use my avatar. Just like I said, these are better. Which reminds me, thank you for everyone who offered constructive criticism regarding the avatar. And thank you for everyone who outright insulted me over the avatar as well. I love you guys too. Anyway, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what we usually do. You may remember that not too long ago, I reviewed the pilot for a new show on the Cartoon Network YouTube page. And I haven't checked yet to see if the show has been picked up for a full season mostly because i'm worried that if i do i'm gonna find out that it's not gonna be picked up so i don't know the status of the show itself if it even exists but i thought the pilot was pretty freaking great and that show was infinity train you can go check out the pilot i'll link to it in the description and i'll link to my review of the pilot at the end of this video but for those of you who don't want to bother with that here's a very brief description of what it is. Infinity Train follows a, I'm assuming, teenage girl named Tulip as she progresses through the mysterious cars of a mysterious train that seems to go on forever, even though that's not possible. The cars each have a different nature to them. There are many, many puzzle cars, but then there are other cars that are just straight up obstacles to overcome, and then some cars which contain entire worlds. Ever since she mysteriously appeared on the train, Tulip has had a strange number on her hand that hasn't changed at all, and her only companion has been a robot named One One, who remembers nothing of who or what he actually is, and is actually made up of two hemispheric robots named Glad One, who is perpetually glad, and Sad One, who is likewise perpetually sad. We receive virtually no answers at all in the pilot, but so many things are set up that are intriguing. So much so that I haven't stopped thinking about the show since I watched it. Particularly one detail of the show. One interesting tidbit that we saw towards the end of the pilot. At the end of the pilot, Tulip is attacked by a monster in one of the world cars, and I think it has an official name now, but I've been calling it the monster, so I'm just going to keep calling it the monster for now. It's this robot thing that is kind of the cross between a land squid, a mechanical spider, and a Hayao Miyazaki creature, and it's one of those kinds of things like what I talked about in my most recent Gravity Falls review. It's an image that is off-putting even to someone of my age group, and therefore I imagine it would be really thrilling to see if you were a kid. It's just such a good design. It's, like the rest of the show, really enjoyable. When she is attacked by the creature, Tulip does her very best to fight back, and eventually the monster retreats. However, the keen-eyed observer may have noticed that it retreats not because of anything that Tulip did, but because it sees 1-1. One, one. Which has gotten me thinking, and I'm probably not the only person who's thought of this. In fact, I'm sure that I'm not the only person who has thought of this. But what if 1-1 is part of the train? We already know that the train employs robots to work on it, as we do see that the monster was doing some work on that car of the train before it retreated, and we do see that once the monster leaves, the number on Tulip's hand changes. It counts down pretty significantly, and that number definitely has something to do with the train as it appeared only after she appeared on the train. So the way I see it, if the robot monster is associated with the train in some way, it isn't that much of a stretch to assume that 1-1 is also associated with the train in some way and the poor little guy wouldn't even know it. He's lost his memories. As I mentioned, this is only just a pilot, so we don't have a lot of details to go off of yet, but let's take a look at what details we do have. Damage has occurred to this car of the train. Whether it's something that happened as the result of regular wear and tear, or if it's something else, we can't really tell. But if we assume that 1-1 is also a robot agent of the train, and therefore part of the train, his memory loss would be another example of damage to the train. And as I'm assuming these robot monsters would be recurring villains in the show itself, I can't help but assume that damage to the train is going to be a recurring theme. If the train has come under recent damage, that would explain why 1-1 doesn't have his memories, as I already mentioned, and might also explain why Tulip was brought on board. Maybe some intelligence running the train assumes that she in some way can help. But in the wake of all of the damage, she was forgotten about, or maybe 1-1 one, one was supposed to lead her to wherever it was she was expected to do, whatever it is that she's expected to do, but then he sustained damage to himself and he forgot. I mean, look at Tulip. She's driven enough as a person that she's already trying to find the front of the train on her own. She's flexible, yet rational and logical and intelligent. She comes aboard this train that doesn't seem to have any logical limits to what can be inside of it, and rather than lose it over the entire thing, she approaches things with logic and reason and keeps her cool. If the train is in some kind of trouble, it would make sense that she might actually be able to do something about it, which would explain why when 1-1 is spotted by the monster, it not only retreats to 
go and let somebody know that Tulip's there and that 1-1 one, one is still with her, but that the number on her hand counts down as well, perhaps signifying that she's now capable of moving further forward in the train, that she's allowed to progress. Because this train does seem to fold dimensions within it. She could technically move forward forever and never actually make any progress unless the train lets her. But if the train itself has some nefarious purpose, then that means there's as good a chance as any that one one's actually an enemy. If he is part of the train, it could turn out that he recovers his memories and becomes a sort of antagonist. It won't be the first time that something like this has been done in fiction, and I'm sure it won't be the last either. I don't know, this is kind of a vague theory. I guess you could call it more of an idea, but I definitely think it holds some weight. Now, whether or not this theory is still applicable to the actual show, should it ever get picked up, as this is just a pilot and it can have slightly different themes than the show itself, is entirely up in the air. I really have no idea. But as things stand, I really do think that 1-1, as much as he is a friend, is also a potential enemy, and is some kind of, for lack of a better term, component of the Infinity Train itself. But guys, what do you think of this theory? Do you find it to be a glad one, or a sad one? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. Either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later. Hey guys, first of all, I want to apologize if my voice sounds a little freaky today. I've been doing a pretty good job of not catching a cold this winter, but apparently I have run out of luck. I hope you like this theory. It was a little bit different than probably anything I've ever done before, but I really enjoyed it, as it meant that I got to watch Infinity Train again, and I really do like it. I really do think it'll make a great show. Come on, Cartoon Network. For once, don't let me down and actually get this thing greenlit. Anyway, next week we're back to classic theories with a Steven Universe one. One that I'm actually really excited about because it works as a direct sequel to my most recent Lapis Lazuli theory. And I think actually ties up a lot of loose ends in her timeline. But we'll talk about that more once we get there. Really quickly, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon patrons. I don't have many of you guys yet, but I want to thank every single one of you nonetheless. You're all pretty freaking great. And as per usual, thank you, all of you, for watching.